Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a very windy day here in the UK, and I thought it was a good time for me to do the journal, uh, the journal, the video that I promised to do for you on how I put these journal covers together. Now, I'm not going to show you, obviously, how I did all the stitching, um, but I'll give you a close up of both of these. Um, this one's completed and just on its way to its new home. And then this is one that I am completing and, and it's been reserved already. Um, so the covers of these journals, uh, my preference is to make soft cover journals. Um, and I wanted to play with the fabrics that I had. And so I made these out of um, strips of fabric that I had. Um, it looks like I've put squares of fabric together and a couple of people have asked me how long it took me to put the squares together. It isn't squares of fabric, it's actually a fabric that's woven and that's what I'm going to show you how I did today. Um, so if I open this journal up you can see, hopefully you can see that. So this one, um, I decorated it with um, a variety of machine stitches that are in my sewing machine. I'll just move that one out the way. And then this one that I've just, well, I've, I've finished doing the slow stitching. This one is all greens. Um, and this one I've hand stitched. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you can see, again, this one's all in different greens. And I've done a different variety of slow stitching. I've put some ribbon in it. Um, it's not cut to size yet, but it will be folded down in half. Um, so it is too big at the moment, but it will be. I do it larger so that for the journals that I make, I like to fold them over so that they've got a neat edge. But you could cut them and have a, a raw edge and just um, stitch zigzag round them. So this is what I'm going to show you today is how I just put these fabrics together. So the way that I did it, um, and on, sorry, if I just take this one back, this was the first one that I did. Um, and I just lined it with a piece of very thin fabric that I had, thin cotton. Um, and if my stitching was neater on the inside, if I'd thought about it, I could have used this um, as the inside of the journal with the, the stitches showing. But it's it's not my neatest. Um, I've got knots and, and ends of threads and things like that. So depending on what you want to do, that could be your soft cover journal because it is layers of fabric. So there is some body to it. Um, so you could just use it that as is. So what I'm going to do with this one is I've got a piece of, this is just really thin, thin cotton, just cheap, thin cotton, bigger than I need it to be so that it gives me um, different options. Sorry, just grabbing my pins, I'd forgotten my pins. Um, so it's bigger than I need it to be. The way that I've done it, and uh, looking on Pinterest, um, I think this was called something like Spirit Cloth. Now, whether that's the name for it or not, I'm not sure. But all I've got is some strips of fabric. So it's fabric weaving. So I'm just going to lay them down. These I've torn, so um, usually when you tear fabrics, just make sure you're in frame, the, the edges are quite straight. So all that you want to do is butt the edges of each strip up with each other. Doesn't matter how wide your strips are, they can vary in size. It's really personal choice how you want to do it, but they obviously need to be longer than you want your finished product to be. Um, you can also lay bits of ribbon or lace while you're doing this as well, should you want to. It just adds a slightly different effect. So for this one, it's going to be similar to the uh, the pink and green one that I did. So you can see that one's thicker, that one's not as thick. But again, I'm just bumping them up. You, I haven't ironed these fabrics either, so where it kicks up there, you can you can iron them before you start. So laying them down. And again, I think I'm going to put a piece of ribbon on that one. You don't have to put ribbon on it. It's just I'm showing you just different things that you can that you can do. Um, and I think I might need one extra on the width. You know that you've got enough strips when you know you need to know roughly how big you want your journal cover to be before you start. So I know that the covers on my journals finished size. I want it to be around twelve and a half by eight and a half. So that when it's folded, 
it gives me six and a quarter by uh, wide by eight and a half tall roughly it's a rough guesstimate so um i've got a a ruler that from that i used when i was quilting and that's 12 and a half by eight and a half so you know however you want to measure it to make sure you've got enough so i know that by with these widths i've got more than eight and a half there uh, sorry more than 12 and a half there and i've got a lot more than the eight and a half there so i know that this is going to be plenty big enough to make the journal size that i want to make so what we do then is the you need a flat edge really to work along so that it makes it slightly easier for you. So the way that I've done it is um, start at the top, I think. You can start wherever you like. It really, really, really doesn't matter. So what you do, put your ruler on just so that you've got a nice flat edge and then you're going to fold back every other uh, strip of fabric. doesn't matter which one you start with. You're going to do it different each row. I do get confused, so just bear with me. So you just fold alternate ones back and I'm going to put my crossways widths, I'm going to do in green. It doesn't matter if you think the fabrics clash because once you get it done, they're not laid next to each other because you've got fabric laying in the opposite direction. Just flip them back, okay? The next one you're going to put, let me just move it down slightly, you're going to lay against the edge of what you've just done and this time you're going to take the opposite ones up so I went over on that one so I want to go under on the next row so alternate to what you did last time fold them up your next strip of fabric lays down and again all that determines your strips on this is they need to be long enough. The width doesn't matter, it's the length. It needs to be long enough. Although where it lays underneath, you could actually join them. Um, that wouldn't be a problem. I think actually on that one, just for a bit of interest, just so that you can see, I'm going to put a bit of, bit of lace on that one. Fold them back down. <laughs> I needed to do that. It's slippy ribbon. No worries, just stick it back under. If you don't want to put the ribbon in at this stage, you can weave it in at the end if you want to. But that is quite slippy ribbon. Okay, so continuing on down, just move your ruler down to the next one and alternate to what you did the last time. So the opposites. And I've done these a few times and I end up having to do it again because I do get confused, as I say, <laughs> which ones I'm lifting up and which ones I'm not. Lay your fabric on. Just make sure you butt it up to the previous row. And that's how your ruler does help you with that. Lay them down. Sorry, I'm at a funny angle doing this. And then again, move it down and I'm going under that one now. Lift the alternate ones up again. I could do with a slightly longer ruler, but never mind. Anything that's got a straight edge you can use. It can be a book, a um, piece of wood, just something that gives you a straight edge to work against. And I might put a piece of lace on that one as well. There we go, put that one down. Nearly there. And then the last one, because that's not, if you can see where I've started, can you see? That's not quite as long as I need it, so I need one more row. And it's going under that one. I hope this isn't too confusing for you and I hope you can see. Okay. And then the last strip is going on there. So again, you can use whatever combination of um, colours, that fabrics that you want. 
um, different fabrics. You could use lace. It doesn't have to be fabric. And if I try and get that in screen for you. So I know there that both rows, it's it's more than um, eight and a half and it's more than 12 and a half. So that gives me plenty to work with. And then to make sure that you've got no movement, all that you need to do is just put a pin in every row. And I'll do this as quick as I can. And once you've done this, it's, it's, it's going nowhere. If you've put a piece of lace in, just make sure that you pin the lace as well so that it doesn't fall out. And as I say, you can also always thread the lace through before you, you need to thread the lace before you start stitching it together. Otherwise, um, you can't thread it through, obviously, once you've started stitching. And the differences that I did on mine, I did one machine stitched and I did the other um, hand stitched. So again, the preference is yours, whatever, whatever your preference is. Um, hand stitching for me does take a long time. I do enjoy it, but um, I've sat in front of the telly and done that. Where are we? Uh, down here. So as long as the outer edge, as long as you put a pin in every one, it will not move. They won't go, they won't fall out. Oops, that pin's broken. That's the last one in there. There we go. So as I say, once you've put your pins in, you can lift it up, you can move it around, you can you can do what you want. Those pins will mean that they will the weaving will not come apart. You could tack all the way around the outer edge of it, and that will work just as well. Um, and that's better than having the pins in if you're going to be stitching it. And then you can sort of get the feel of what it's going to look like as a journal cover when you fold it. So you can see it alternates, so you can't see if, if you thought they were going to clash. They certainly don't. Um, on this one, um, I've decorated it. As you can see, I've put some lace through and I've put some flowers on it. You can put buttons on it. it. It's, you know, the choice is yours. So you can put a variety of different things on um, and decorate it any way that you want to. Play with it. Okay. So that is how I put these covers together. This one and this one. As I say, hand stitched, machine stitched. Um, and with this one, if I'm careful and, and think about it as I'm doing it, the underside um, can stay I don't need to cover it again with anything else and make it into a journal cover. So that's my um, slow stitched and machine machine stitched. If it's called spirit cloth, uh, maybe somebody can tell me, but um, that's what I saw it on Pinterest. And that's the easiest way that I found to, to get this design. So I look forward to seeing what you all make. Um, let me know if you found this useful. And thank you very much for looking. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye.